Hello friends and welcome back to another video and on this channel we like to work on reproducing audio with a soul and, and with musicality and um, so that we can en enjoy a, a time out and, and, a, and a pleasure of listening to beautiful music and um, in that pursuit we also look at Rectifiers. So that's the topic of this video. Now the nice thing is um, I've been trying four different rectifiers and, comp and making a fair comparison between them in my amp. That means is I didn't let them... Um, I had I managed the operating point so that the amp was operating at say, the, 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 the type 47 tubes that I'm using in my power amp. I was operating them at exactly the same voltage so that the differences were mostly due to the, the rec to the rectifier, not anything else. So the circuit was kept the same. So what I'll do in this video is I will see if this should be the rule of thumb that a high voltage drop tubes actually sound mellow and the low voltage drops should sound firm as a general rule of thumb. And um, we're going to see if that is true and also I'll share you my listening notes. Now which four tubes? These are the ones and I tried them in this order. So I started out with the EZ81. So that is a quite a small but a, um, a reasonably low voltage drop rectifier. Um, so what it does is I've got a table here. So it draws one amp at 6.3 volts. It can maximally conduct 180 milliamps. Now my amp draws around I would say 70 milliamps as a constant draw and the operating point of my tubes was at 250. So the rest of this table is how the operating point changed when putting in, the, in a different tube just without making any other corrections. Then Hugo asked me, he said, can you put in the type 80 and sort of see if you get the same effect as changing to a small power cable um, that the conductivity really matters. And um, and so I put in the EZ80 because it's pin compatible, as Hugo pointed out, uh, which is correct. These are interchangeable, but not in specs, obviously, because look, more heat to draw and far higher uh, max power. Now, when I first tried it out, it sounded awful, the EZ80, um, but that was at its lower op operating point. So it dropped to um, 243 volts. Um, and what it sounded like, it was like dull. It sounded like a much lower class amp. It was a bit lifeless even. I found that rhythmically it just didn't... It almost felt like it didn't belong... The music lost some of its coherency even. So uh, much further than this really. Um, I wouldn't even call it mellow. It was just no light. Now, when I ha once I had it here, because it took a while actually for this tube to actually starting to sound better and, and it just needed uh, something that I didn't realize at the start, but it needed quite a bit of time to run in and um, it was probably a real new old stock that I put in. Um, and it just took quite, quite a while, so the effects became a bit less than than, um, than I thought at the start, but still it... it it lack it lacks vitality and, and life in it. it. It really I wouldn't call it mellow even. It's it's it just yeah. It really still felt like a lower class amp. Now, what I think was one of the causes because I eventually of course moved to two type 80s, which is a directly heated tube um, with an even larger voltage drop despite using two in parallel. So this was not just a part of the operating point because the two type 80s didn't have that problem. Um, very different sound than the EZ81, but not the problem that I heard with the EZ. And one of the things that I suspect is, if I have to draw 70 milliamps, you have to realize that the power comes in with the big sine wave. So to get 70 milliamps on, on constant, you, you probably need at peak, uh, like 1.4 times 70, uh, I don't know what that is exactly, but I would sort of expect that it's 110 milliamps you want to actually uh, carry through. Now, that is with, not within the constant peak draw, but it's, it should be, it shouldn't have a problem because peak draw is higher for this tube. But I just think I, I ran into the headroom of this tube. Um, it has a very low heater requirement, the EZ80, it's only you know 600 milliamps. 
uh, at 6.3 volts but I think that that is part of the reason why it sounded so bad I was just running into the headroom probably of this tube so it means whenever it's sort of swinging out or it needs it has a demand on, on, on instant current um, it just can't provide it or it doesn't want to provide it. it's just limited um, because when I move to the type 80 let's get on to that topic um, which is very different these are not comparable this is a um, one of the earliest rectifiers the type 80 uh, has a huge voltage drop hence I use two in parallel to 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 sort of minimize it a little bit it has two in parallel has a much more impressive with the choke that I used it has it has quite quite a bit of uh, capacity but it comes at a cost of four amps at five volts um, to keep it operating this was the original voltage drop it might even be lower 234 volts or so it was quite significant the, the voltage drop now the sound i would describe as romantic so that seems to confirm this thing yes it was a bit more mellower although it gained probably a, a tonal refinement that um, compared to my original amp with the EZ81 that just gives it, it just moves it into a different uh, type of sound. So it's, 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 you don't really miss the dynamics when you, when I moved here. It is a very nice refined sound. Um, unlike the EZ80. Um, so pleasurable, but yeah, it's just a nice sound. So I think if you, if you want something, I can see why you would use it. It just depends on your taste. And let's get to the last tube because that will contrast it neatly. So then I went also to um, the 54G, and that is a further. That is basically the octal version of the Type 83V. Now the Type 83V, I don't know if it was designed to partly to not have a mercury rectifier at type 83 because what it is is basically a, a type 80 it has much of the same design but it is indirectly heated and it has a much lower voltage drop um, so with that I got about the same working point even a little bit higher um, spec is quite comparable to the EZ81 it's indirectly heated but it draws 2 amps at 5 volts um, and you know what I learned over my um, last six years of amp building or something is mostly that actually, yes, you know, it can be nice that you don't use too much heat, filament heater power, but it, it, it isn't a free ride. Uh, it is not just saving on, on that power that you, that you draw from your filament uh, transformers or from the output uh, taps on your um, thing. It might have some benefits, but but really what you're also, um, I think you're limiting the headroom in, in each tube. So. Um, so what did it do when I put this tube in? Well, it became hugely dynamic, and um, and I mean, not only this. So it, yes, if I look at the, that mellow and firm, yes, it became more firm. I got ba bass slam. I got uh, presence. So all the instruments popped out of the speaker. Um, very high hi fi like sound, actually. Um, I must say, but without the usual compromises. So. It's not like I had, it's like, you know, the overtones of a piano, when, when the hammer falls on the strings, you get this, that energy that releases. And, and when you have, when I have this tube, even more so than the EZ81, it became very lifelike dynamics. I got more, I, I traveled way more. It's of course not, a, not never as much as a real instrument, which is actually quite fatiguing in a real instrument if you're up close. Um, but it came cl close. It was mo much more um, in the ballpark. You know, you get you get the experience of a real instrument uh, far more. Um, so that's what I gained. Um, what else would I say? So normally, I would say it always comes. At, it often comes when when it goes high fi as an amp. Um, you get this thing that you seem to gain detail, and. Um, Uh, yeah, um, it seems to splutter, but then what you lose often is is the timing element and and, and the the coherence in, in the overall music. And I didn't feel I paid paid much of the price. Yes, it wasn't romantic. It wasn't. 
that that sort of dreamy tonal landscape but I, it didn't cost that much yet I gained a lot of impressions and dynamics so it's it's uh, it came at a very low cost I found with this rectifier um, so I was very happy with that um, with that change and so this is will be my final choice at the moment um, I might try some other tubes as well maybe the 5 UG uh, but it's much more popular so um, it is sort of interesting to go with it uh, because you can get a, a new old stock tube basically for not that much money if it's not that popular a type so um, that is my normal hunting ground um, anyway that was my comparison for these four rectifiers so I think we can confirm this but I would say it depends a lot on um, your amp and my listening notes are in my specific amp so I basically run a LCLC -LC filter on my amp um, because it's a type 47 single stage power amp with not much gimmicks in it it's a very simple circuit um, I think I can isolate the effects of the rectifiers reasonably well they're very audible um, now one last thing um, you, can, you can maybe say and I think I did the comparison also properly because I, 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 moder I made sure that the operating points when comparing were the same of the, the Type 47s. The other thing is why would you then go to a solid state rectifier? And that's a good question. So if you're really lacking that, it could be an option for you. Um, but you have two methods of controlling it. You have the rectifier, but you also have the... Um, you also have the tube operating point so which will also play into the same field as this does so it is the same type of movement in the so you have two levers which you can control it with um, now technically of course tubes have much lower uh, switching noises than um, solid states and also if they fail they usually fail open while a solid state if that melts through um, it will be a short um, and of course, TV dampers are probably the lowest, the the, the, the lowest switching noise uh, rectifiers known to man. So um, that that is the reason why particular M builders are using TV dampers, uh, which are usually also cheaper, by the way. So, um, and I might still give that a, ch uh, a try uh, to uh, actually build a bridge a bridge network with four half wave rectifiers. Um, and uh, TV dampers and see what that does. But um, anyway, these are my listening notes so far. Thank you for tuning into my channel again. I uh, hope that it was interesting to, to see a um, rectifier comparison. Um, I already posted a, a sound clip yesterday, um, so you can watch that if you like. Um, that, that's with this amp, with this rectifier. And um, yeah, that's it for now. Thank you for tuning in and um, have a brilliant day and week and um, hope to catch you in the next one soon. Bye bye.